Oh, how long I have waited to finally do this. Review the 2019 Formula 1 season for Ferrari. A season that has been so incredibly dramatic, it absolutely does deserve its own video. Where we are going to today analyse every step of the disaster that was 2019 for the Scuderia. Where we're going to look at every mistake and everything that happened in 2019 that caused this failure. So buckle up ladies and gentlemen for one hell of a ride. Now before we get into reviewing Ferrari's 2019 step by step I need to clarify two things before I really get started. One, this video will not be detailing Ferrari's failed development this season as I've already done a video on that. If you want to see it, here is the video. It's in the description down below. Make sure to go and watch that. And also, for any Ferrari fans out there, I have to clarify that yes, this video and part two of this is going to be very critical of your team Ferrari. You may think it's undeserved, but in my opinion, as a neutral, it is not. And I am not going to let this team get away with what has been one of the most shambolic seasons in their entire history. So I will indeed, in this video and in part two, go in on Ferrari. But we start first at pre-season testing where the Ferrari hype train kicked into gear. As it appeared in the first and second test that Ferrari did have the best car and were comfortably quicker than Mercedes. As Mercedes had struggled during the first test with a car that was underdeveloped and in the second test they were not looking too quick. And all we heard during testing is that Ferrari were quicker. As Ferrari had the best lap time of testing and they were at the top of the timesheets the most out of any team. So of course people would think Ferrari were going to have the best car coming into the 2019 season. But testing wasn't without its trouble as they did have a couple small issues. They did have a wheel rim issue that caused Sebastian Vettel to have quite a big crash at turn 3. And also some exhaust problems occurred that curtailed their running on certain days. But coming away from testing based on the lap times and the talk of the paddock, Ferrari were the favourites for the championships in 2019. And with Melbourne only a fortnight away, surely Ferrari would straight away show what they have to offer this season. But they did the exact opposite of that, as first in qualifying they could only qualify 3rd and 5th and were miles off pole position. Pole position being got by Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes with teammate Bottas in 2nd. Now the reason they lacked pace in general during the Australian Grand Prix weekend is because they had quite a stiff suspension setup that did not work with the Melbourne track. And they also got the cooling wrong on the packaging of the Ferrari as well. Meaning they had to turn the power unit down so they didn't have a reliability failure. And this obviously wasn't helped by the extreme heat we saw during the Australian Grand Prix weekend as well. But it's amazing to think isn't it that we've come to Melbourne now for 23 years in Formula 1 and Ferrari got it so wrong with the setup of their suspension. Melbourne is definitely known as a bumpy track so it's not like Ferrari would have been surprised. And again, we've come here for 23 years. How did they get this so wrong? When it comes to the cooling and the packaging, that happens sometimes. But when it comes to the suspension setup, again, we've been coming to Melbourne for so long. How do you get that wrong? But oh well, maybe in the race they can recover some lost positions. Well, that's the opposite of what they did. First off, Sebastian Vettel in the race did the best he could in the first 20 laps. But then after his first and only pit stop, where he was put on the medium compound tyre... He simply fell away, as Ferrari strategically got it wrong by putting him on that softer compound instead of the hard white wall compound of tyre. A tyre that Charles Leclerc was put on at his first pit stop that allowed Leclerc to then catch Vettel by the end of the Grand Prix. As Leclerc also had quite a torrid time as he struggled a lot in the first stint with the grip of the Ferrari as he went off track at turn 1 during his first stint. And because Sebastian Vettel's medium compound tyres in the second stint were not working, that allowed Max Verstappen, who was on fresher tyres, to catch and easily overtake Sebastian Vettel. And after that, Ferrari completely fell away. And even by the end of the race, Charles Leclerc was right behind Sebastian Vettel, but Ferrari rightfully said to Leclerc to not pass Vettel. Because simply at the end of the day, there was nothing for Ferrari to gain in allowing Leclerc and Vettel to race over P4. But all in all, the first race of the season was an awful race for Ferrari and they would of course be hoping for better things in Bahrain. 
But before we get into Bahrain, I need to just have a quick rant. And that rant is directed at Autosport. Because all we heard during testing and the build-up to the Australian Grand Prix is that Ferrari were miles clear of Mercedes. Now I will admit I also did get it wrong because after testing I thought Ferrari were quicker than Mercedes but I said that they were definitely not half a second clear and that it was still going into the first race going to be close between Vettel, Leclerc and the Ferrari and Hamilton and Bottas in the Mercedes. But Autosport were basically proclaiming Ferrari as the champions of 2019 when we hadn't even seen what the pace was actually going to be in Melbourne. And the reason I have to show up Autosport for this is because this company are so close to what is going on in Formula 1. And their journalists are so in tune apparently with what is going on in the paddock and in Formula 1. That they should be able to know a lot more than me what the real pecking order is going into 2019. And they should not be getting it as wrong as they did. As it turned out, I was actually closer to the truth than they were, even though I was wrong. Ferrari did not have the best car. But Autosport haven't exactly had a great year, have they? And they capped off all this Ferrari talk at the start of the season by proclaiming that Mercedes were even surprised by their own pace. Which, I'm sorry, is complete crap. Of course they knew they were so quick. Just because they don't tell you how quick they are doesn't mean they're not quick. And I think there I just need to illustrate how poor Autosport's covering of Ferrari during testing really was. But anyway, back to the action as we then headed to Bahrain where Ferrari were a lot more confident of success. And they got some great success in qualifying by locking out the front row just like they did in 2018 with Charles Leclerc getting his first ever pole position in his Formula 1 career. With the four-time world champion Sebastian Vettel ending up in second place and surely Ferrari in the Grand Prix would go on to another Bahrain Grand Prix victory. Well, it's not as simple as that. As their race turned out to be very, very dramatic as Sebastian Vettel took the lead on the first lap as Charles Leclerc dropped down to P3. Having quite a poor start and he was lucky to not get beat by Hamilton on the first lap. Then at the end of the first lap, going into the second lap, Charles Leclerc then passed Valtteri Bottas, who made a mistake at Turn 1. As it was now Ferrari 1-2, as Charles Leclerc then marched up to the back of Sebastian Vettel, and against team orders, went round the outside at Turn 1, and took the lead. Even though, again, it was against team orders, I think Leclerc was right for going for the move, because he was clearly faster during that entire weekend, never mind the Grand Prix. So it was now Charles Leclerc leading from Sebastian Vettel in second. Surely Ferrari would hang on for the very least a race victory. As it was proving quite tough for Sebastian Vettel to hold on to second place against Lewis Hamilton. As Hamilton performed an undercut on Vettel at the first pit stop. And then Vettel got back ahead during the second stint. And then at the second and final pit stop Hamilton went for the undercut again. Vettel covered it off but then cracked under pressure. Because as Lewis Hamilton dummied and moved down at turn 1, Vettel fell for it and put himself out of position going up towards turn 3 and 4. Allowing Lewis Hamilton a great run around the outside into turn 4 and Hamilton went straight around the outside. And then due to the overwhelming pressure, Sebastian Vettel spun just like he did plenty of times in 2018. And then due to the bad vibration on his tyres, he then came back into the pits with no front wing as the tyres vibrated his front wing to pieces. He would end up finishing in P5. But at least Charles Leclerc was still in the lead of the Grand Prix and surely heading for Ferrari's first win of 2019 and his first win of his F1 career. It wouldn't sadly be the case as with 10 laps to go, Charles Leclerc reported a loss of power. The loss of power was caused by a short circuit within an injection control unit, meaning Charles Leclerc was severely down on power and had no chance now of winning the Grand Prix. As then Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas passed him to make it a Mercedes 1-2 and with the safety car coming out late on, Charles Leclerc ended up in third place. A race win that should have been for Charles Leclerc was took away by the unreliability of Ferrari. And if Ferrari were going to put down a marker for 2019 in the championship battle, it had to be right here. Because after this, the confidence and the performance of the Ferrari sunk quite low. As at the next race in Shanghai, China, they qualified on the second row as they were clearly slower than rivals Mercedes. But thought they stood an okay chance of going for the race victory on Sunday, but that never really happened. 
As at the start, Charles Leclerc got ahead of Sebastian Vettel and then proceeded to hold up Sebastian for some of the first stint. Sebastian was not exactly all over the back of Leclerc, but definitely was being held up. So soon enough, after wasting plenty of time, Leclerc was ordered to let Vettel through. A move that would ensure a podium, but no chance of race victory now. As after the first round of pit stops, Max Verstappen tried the undercut on Sebastian Vettel and even went for the move. But Sebastian just about hung on and hung on to the podium. As after Leclerc let Vettel through, Ferrari hung Leclerc out to dry Kimi Raikkonen style and completely ruined his Grand Prix. As he came home in a lowly P5. But Ferrari weren't quite miffed as to why they were so slow in Shanghai, but it was pretty simple. The Ferrari design concept for 2019 was simply not good enough for an aerodynamic circuit like Shanghai. As a lot of the corners require a good front end and that's something Ferrari do not have. As they went for a front wing design that was designed to ensure that they were quicker down the straights. But around a track like Shanghai, that's not what you need. You need front and rear a good downforce package and that's what Ferrari during the entire of 2019 didn't have. And because of the low drag aerodynamic concept they went with in 2019, that meant that their tyre wear was then worse because of the lack of downforce they had. And tyre wear, as we know, is quite important in China. But Ferrari insisted that going into Baku, things would be put right and be back to the top of the timesheets. And after practice, things were looking pretty good. It looked as though Ferrari would be back at the top of the timesheets, but that's not what happened when it mattered most. As Charles Leclerc, with pole position possibly hanging there for him to go and get, crashed in Q2 and eliminated himself from the fight for pole position in qualifying. We're simply on the medium tyres, locked up going into the castle section and went straight into the barriers, pushing too hard. He would do well enough to get into Q3 with the time he did, but was not going to fight for pole. And this eliminated him from any chance of winning the Grand Prix either. But they still had Sebastian Vettel able to fight for pole position, but he couldn't get anywhere near close enough. As the Ferrari in the middle sector where downforce is very much needed was simply too poor. And the two Mercedes cars also got a very nice slipstream going to the start finish line on their final qualifying attempt. All of that contributed towards Sebastian Vettel not getting pole position. And also another problem from this race would arise and really showcase itself in the Grand Prix as well. As after just the first stint to the Grand Prix, Sebastian Vettel in the first 10 laps was losing one second per lap to Bottas and Hamilton. This was due to not using the tyres in the way that they had to around that track and also because Ferrari were lacking tyre temperature and were not getting the tyres in the right temperature window for their car, leading to Vettel being miles off the pace. But Ferrari did have Charles Leclerc coming back through the field on his medium compound tyres and he was looking very quick. As the top runners were forced to pit early because of just how quick Leclerc was on the harder compound of tyre. But then once those top runners such as Bottas, Hamilton, Vettel, Verstappen pitted, Leclerc's advantage was negated. And then once Leclerc pitted halfway through the Grand Prix, he was put on the wrong tyres in hindsight as Ferrari thought the soft tyres would be good enough to go to the end, but they weren't. And in hindsight again, they probably should have gone for the hard compound, but they didn't know that the tyres would work that way going into the race. But the race result would finish 3rd and 5th for Ferrari, and in a similar way to Bahrain, at a weekend where they should have been very, very quick and getting a great result, they didn't get that much at all. And after this race, the World Constructors' Championship, at least, was basically over for Ferrari. With Leclerc and Vettel now having a slim chance of winning the drivers in this season. But maybe at the next race, the Spanish Grand Prix, a Grand Prix where normally the teams tend to bring big upgrades to try and improve their car, maybe Ferrari will get a lot closer to Mercedes in the areas where they are the most weakest. So what is, you may ask, the biggest upgrade Ferrari brought to the Spanish Grand Prix, a track where you need a lot of good downforce? It is, of course, a new engine, a decision that is rather baffling. And because that was their biggest upgrade of the weekend, that meant they had a horrible weekend. As the best they could do was third and fifth in qualifying as the Ferrari car was awfully slow in the final two sectors of the track. 
The Ferrari was even losing 8 tenths of a second in the final sector, which was only 17 seconds long. And qualifying definitely could have been better for Charles Leclerc if he didn't run over an exit cover a bit too hard in Q2, causing damage to his floor, causing a delayed start to his qualifying three. But things were not looking good going into the race at all for Ferrari, and it turned out in the race to be even worse than they could have imagined. As at the start of the race, Sebastian Vettel tried to go for the lead in a very ambitious move, and he locked up badly his front tyre. Causing a massive vibration he would struggle with for the rest of the first stint as Max Verstappen overtook both Ferraris around the outside in turn 2 and turn 3. Thus guaranteeing because of the extra grip of the Red Bull, Max Verstappen a podium finish as Ferrari then started to fight themselves. As Charles Leclerc in the first stint of the Grand Prix was clearly faster than Sebastian Vettel, mostly because of Vettel's horrible vibration on his front tyres. And it was clear to the rest of the world that Sebastian Vettel was indeed holding up Charles Leclerc, except to Ferrari, who took way too long to allow Leclerc pass Vettel, which they did eventually. And then in the second stint of the Grand Prix, Charles Leclerc was then holding up Sebastian Vettel, but this time because of Ferrari's poor strategy, by putting Leclerc on the unfavoured and poor hard compound tyre, that in the Grand Prix for any team that used it simply did not work meaning that then Leclerc was holding up Sebastian Vettel and eventually Vettel was let through, but again, it took way too long to make that decision. And even though I don't think Max Verstappen would have lost the podium in this Grand Prix, they lost way too much time Ferrari fighting themselves. And there is no way you can tell me they did the best they could in the Grand Prix. Came away from the Spanish Grand Prix with P4 and P5, another disappointing result and performance. And with the next race being the Monaco Grand Prix where downforce is so badly needed, Ferrari knew it was not going to be a good weekend. But qualifying proved to be much worse in Monaco than they thought it would be. As in Q1, Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel set times that were not really good enough to absolutely get into the next part of qualifying. But Leclerc still was in the next part of qualifying just about in P12, about a tenth of a second clear of the drop zone. Now everyone at home, including me on the watch along for the Monaco Grand Prix qualifying session, and Nib, who I believe was on that stream as well, thought Leclerc had to go out again to make sure he was in. He's still in the pit lane, and he's only in 12th, and I would expect Vettel, Hülkenberg, Norris, Albon to all improve. But Ferrari left him in the pits thinking that a tenth of a second would not be overcome by the drivers below him in the order. And eventually, of course, most of the drivers below him improved, including teammate Sebastian Vettel knocking Charles Leclerc out of qualifying one. And Vettel should be getting into Q. And Perez has ended up 15th. Albon 13th. Hülkenberg 14th. If Vettel goes fastest, Leclerc's out. And yes, he goes fast as Charles Leclerc's out of qualifying. Charles Leclerc ends up P16. Now, once again, please tell me how everyone around the world, me in my house and Nib in his house in Australia, can see that Charles Leclerc was not safe enough to get into the next part of qualifying, but Ferrari, who are literally track side, overlooking the track, can't see that. Monaco is not a track where you take risks like that. You've got to make sure in Monaco because you can then end up with a position that is horrible for the race where track position is so important. It does not take a genius to work this out or to see that Charles Leclerc was safe or not. He was clearly not safe and not sending him out was a horrific mistake. By a man who, funnily enough, held a seminar on strategy in Aki Rueda the day before in Monaco. The irony is strong with this one. And with Sebastian Vettel in qualifying, he did the best he could and qualified in P4 despite hitting the barriers twice during qualifying. And once on his final attempt to improve his position, hitting the barriers on the entry two to back. Driving a car that looked undrivable for most of the afternoon. Surely the race was going to be even worse. Well, for one driver, it wasn't actually worse. It was actually quite a good result with Sebastian Vettel in P2 from the Grand Prix. 
This was because Max Verstappen and Valtteri Bottas had a collision in the pit lane on their first and only round of pit stops that caused Bottas to pit again and Max to get a penalty. And because Lewis Hamilton was so slow, he held up Max Verstappen, allowing Sebastian Vettel to be within five seconds of Max. So that's why Sebastian Vettel finished in P2, which is a good result, but the pace of the car still wasn't that great. But I wonder how Charles Leclerc did from 16th on the grid. Well, he had a good start to the Grand Prix, passing a couple cars, but then by about lap 10, it was all over. As he tried to pass Nico Hülkenberg at Ras Kass, and it did not work. He hit the barriers, got a puncture, and retired from the race. Nice to see Ferrari completely destroy the Monegasque's hopes of a great home race. And a great home debut for his new team Ferrari. Luckily though for Ferrari, the two tracks, Spain and Monaco, that require high downforce were now over as we headed to the low downforce Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve. For the 2019 Canadian Grand Prix where Ferrari expected to be a lot more competitive. And they absolutely were as Sebastian Vettel produced a great final lap in qualifying to get pole position for the first time this season. With Charles Leclerc being miles behind in third place. And it was now Ferrari's second opportunity with pole position in 2019 to go and get their first win of the season. And as long as the drivers and the team kept everything under control, surely they would get it. Well, after the first round of pit stops for Sebastian Vettel, things were looking very comfortable. He was comfortably leading the race and it looked as though Ferrari had enough speed to hold off Lewis Hamilton if Lewis Hamilton started to attack, which he did in the second stint. And for Charles Leclerc, he was pretty much nailed down to third place because he was simply too slow compared to Vettel and Hamilton. But once Lewis Hamilton started to apply mass amounts of pressure, Sebastian Vettel then had to drive at his best to try and keep Lewis Hamilton behind. And it would need Vettel to not crack under the mass amount of pressure that Lewis Hamilton was putting him under, which is exactly what he did. As it turned four, he went off onto the grass late on in the Grand Prix and came back on in what the stewards called dangerous and said that Sebastian Vettel rejoined in an unsafe manner thus they gave him a five second time penalty and because Lewis Hamilton then remained within five seconds of Sebastian Vettel Lewis Hamilton went on to win the Canadian Grand Prix now let's reflect on what happened in Canada for the final time of 2019 thankfully now we cannot doubt that Sebastian Vettel for the second time in 2019 cracked under pressure from Lewis Hamilton Sebastian Vettel was not under threat from position, Lewis Hamilton was not trying to overtake him, simply Sebastian Vettel was trying too hard to stay ahead, when all he really needed to do was keep it cool, keep it nice and calm and stay ahead, but instead carried too much speed going into turn 4 and collected a bit of oversteer and went off the track. Now I still to this day disagree with the penalty because I do not understand what Sebastian Vettel is supposed to do in rejoining the track. When you come back off the track when there's grass off the track in this instance what are you supposed to do? Sebastian Vettel is not going to have 100% great grip coming off the grass and is going to have quite poor understeer coming off that part of the track as well which is why he washed out to the edge of the track. And I just don't agree that Sebastian Vettel rejoined in an unsafe manner when he couldn't control the way he rejoined the track. If he could, then it's understandable, but he couldn't. And to the people that say, well, Sebastian Vettel made a mistake, he deserved the punishment, that's not an argument. Yes, Sebastian Vettel went off the circuit. Yes, he made a mistake. But he was punished for rejoining the track in an unsafe manner. A manner that he couldn't control. And almost every racing driver who commented on that penalty said that Sebastian Vettel could not control the way he came back on track. And also I need to debunk the argument that Sebastian Vettel gained an advantage by going off the track at turn 4. He clearly did not because Lewis Hamilton was actually in a better position to overtake after Vettel made the mistake so... How did Vettel gain an advantage? And just because you go off track doesn't mean you gained an advantage or you gained anything. You actually have to look at the circumstances of where they went off on the track and again whether they gained anything and Vettel did not. So the penalty I'm afraid was complete rubbish and Sebastian Vettel did deserve to win the Grand Prix but he didn't. But that didn't mean Ferrari were not going to let this go as they appealed the decision of the FIA stewards in Canada. 
and the decision of the appeal was then announced to the Paul Ricard circuit at the French Grand Prix. And the FIA rejected Ferrari's appeal as it also came out the evidence that Ferrari supplied to the FIA building up to the French Grand Prix meeting. The evidence Ferrari supplied was an eye view cam of Sebastian Vettel's visor. I'm guessing to illustrate where Sebastian was looking and how he couldn't quite see where Lewis Hamilton was. And Corinne Chandock's analysis of said incident on Sky Sports F1. Now the eye view cam I can kind of understand but it wasn't really going to show anything new or dramatic to the stewards. And the Corinne Chantok analysis was never going to work as evidence. Corinne Chantok was simply giving his opinion on what happened. His opinion obviously being different to the stewards who gave Sebastian Vettel a penalty in Canada. What Ferrari needed to supply was some sort of factual evidence to try and absolve Vettel of a penalty. But you can't just use someone's opinion of an incident as evidence. But that was now the second time that Ferrari were robbed of victory, even though they were kind of robbing themselves of victory again. And talking of the French Grand Prix, let's talk about how poor it was. So Leclerc qualified third and Sebastian Vettel qualified in P7. The reason Vettel qualified P7 is because in his first Q3 run, he had a reliability issue and in the second run, simply didn't do a good enough lap. While Charles Leclerc during the entire weekend did the best he could with what was quite a poor car. As once again, at a circuit at Paul Ricard that required good amounts of downforce, Ferrari just didn't have. Meaning that Charles Leclerc had to be at his best to even be on the podium in the Grand Prix, which is where he ended up. He was very close to Valtteri Bottas at the end, but realistically was never going to finish in second place. Meanwhile, Sebastian Vettel overtook the two McLarens quite comfortably and then settled in in fifth place. Because of Vettel's poor qualifying, there was nothing he could really do after that. So it was third and fifth at the French Grand Prix, and that's the best they could do, again, after qualifying. A week later, though, we turned up to another track, similar to Canada and Bahrain, where Ferrari could go for the race victory again. The Red Bull Ring in Austria, a track that is known for being very favourable to cars very quick in a straight line. And during practice and qualifying, Ferrari were very quick around the old Osterreich Ring. With Charles Leclerc getting pole position and the best out of his Ferrari car. And Sebastian Vettel finished up in P10 because of yet another reliability issue in qualifying. The reliability issue, by the way, was a loss of pneumatic pressure to the Ferrari power unit. Meaning that his hopes of race victory were over and his podium chances were quite slim. But into the race we got and for Sebastian Vettel he made his way up through the field and got up into the top four. After Max Verstappen on the front row made a very poor start allowing Sebastian Vettel to get into a near podium position. And when Sebastian Vettel pitted early on to try and get near to a podium Ferrari cocked up the pit stop. Just allowing Sebastian Vettel's weekend to get even worse. And can we just appreciate the stupidity of this pit stop by Ferrari? Because Ferrari had tried to and actually did force Mercedes into falling for their dummy pit stop that turned into a real pit stop for Ferrari. So they made Mercedes pit a bit early with Valtteri Bottas than they wanted to. But Ferrari were not even ready for Sebastian Vettel, meaning that essentially Ferrari fell for their own dummy. Then Charles Leclerc a few laps later pitted from the lead and he was looking very comfortable in the lead of the race until Max Verstappen happened. As Max Verstappen ran much longer, got his way through the pack and was now looking very quick after his only pit stop. As Verstappen first disposed of Sebastian Vettel who did the best he could to defend but was simply too slow to hold Max back. And after this Sebastian Vettel would pit for another set of tyres and try and go for a podium. Which he almost did after overtaking Lewis Hamilton near the end and getting very close to Valtteri Bottas on the final lap. But after Verstappen got rid of Bottas, he then caught Charles Leclerc. And at first, Charles Leclerc did put up a good defence against Max Verstappen just about at the end of the Grand Prix, hanging on to the lead. But in that first piece of racing, he allowed Max Verstappen the inside line and Max Verstappen did not punish him properly for it. But on the second one, he did. And Charles Leclerc simply allowed Max Verstappen way too much space to make the overtake work. 
And when you leave drivers like Max Verstappen enough space to make an overtake for the lead work, they're going to kill you for it. And still to this day, Charles Leclerc, in my opinion, could have done a lot more. Because again, if you leave the inside line that wide open at the end of the Grand Prix, when you're racing for the lead, you're going to lose position. Because other great drivers are simply not going to allow you to get away with it. And Charles Leclerc definitely learned quite a lot from this, even though he would do this again later on in the season. But Charles Leclerc giving Max Verstappen too much space on the inside allowed Max Verstappen to win and Charles Leclerc to finish in second place. And once again, Ferrari, when they were in a great position to win, threw it away. And this time, it was because of Charles Leclerc's lack of defence. Surely Ferrari was so close to winning a Grand Prix after coming so close three times. But with the next track at Silverstone also being similar to Austria in its high speed elements, maybe Ferrari could correct that straight away. But sadly for them, they just couldn't do so. Charles Leclerc qualified third at Silverstone and was very close to pole position, but was simply not quick enough. As Sebastian Vettel was having a horrible weekend qualifying in sixth place as he just couldn't drive the Ferrari car. As Ferrari were trying a new setup with their car, there was not allowing Sebastian Vettel to get the best out of himself. But with Leclerc not that far off pole position in terms of lap time, maybe he could compete for race victory. That would be if Ferrari could look after tyres and not have such poor race pace. As Leclerc was now resigned to racing cars behind instead of cars in front. As for the entire first stint to the Grand Prix, he was fighting Max Verstappen incredibly hard for position and by some miracle stayed ahead of Max Verstappen for so long, as they were battling wheel to wheel every single lap. And by the first round of pit stops, Max Verstappen just about got ahead, but then Leclerc got him back straight away. But when the safety car came out for Antonio Giovinazzi's spun car, this is where Ferrari's race really turned. Because firstly, Max Verstappen pitted yet again straight away, as Ferrari left Charles Leclerc out and then pitted him a lap later, even though the lap before they had enough time to pit him. This strategy decision is truly a very weird one, and that put Charles Leclerc down in P5 as teammate Sebastian Vettel had jumped up to third place. And after Leclerc tried to pass Max Verstappen on the safety car restart, Verstappen then set after Sebastian Vettel for third place. And after passing Vettel going into Stowe Corner, Vettel tried to come back and just slammed straight into the back of the Red Bull. Providing yet another reason as to why Sebastian Vettel is on the downslope in his career and capped off his terrible weekend. But thankfully that allowed Charles Leclerc to get the podium that he deserved for the hard work he put in during the weekend. And Ferrari were moderately satisfied with the result they got even though again it could have been a lot better. And it could have been a lot better if Sebastian Vettel's performance was a lot stronger at Silverstone. As his lack of pace really did let the team down, but it was his home race next up. Maybe he would improve. Not that he'd get the chance to, as he had a reliability issue in Q1 and ended up qualifying last. So for the second time this season, Ferrari giving a shocking amount of support for one of their drivers at their home Grand Prix. But they still had Charles Leclerc in contention and he was looking very quick Leclerc for possibly getting pole position. That would be if Ferrari didn't have yet another reliability problem in qualifying. This time in Q3 putting him out and in to P10. Reliability issues this time was an intercooler problem on Sebastian Vettel's car and a fuel pump issue on Charles Leclerc's car. And it still astounds me that a works team right now in Formula 1 has two big reliability issues in a one hour qualifying session. But it's Ferrari, what else is there to say? But with the race being wet and then turning dry possibly later on, maybe Ferrari could make up for it in what could be a mental Grand Prix. And that's exactly what it turned out to be as Charles Leclerc made a great start to the race going from P10 up to P4. And that was all in just the first 10 to 15 laps. Meanwhile, Sebastian Vettel went from the very back of the grid up into the points. But then started to suffer some slight engine issues once again that curtailed his progress. But up until it started to go dry, Ferrari's race was looking pretty good in comparison of course to qualifying. 
But when it turned dry, it turned into a disaster for Leclerc. As after going on dry tyres and taking the risk, he went off at the skating rink at the final corner and into the barriers. All through driver error and was out of the German Grand Prix. In a race that could have provided a podium finish, maybe even a race victory for the Monegasque. Leaving only one driver for Ferrari left in the Grand Prix, Bastian Vettel who was still cruising around in the lower half of the points. But as it turned dry once again at the end of the Grand Prix, Ferrari got the tyre choice right with Sebastian Vettel and started to go after the podium. As with Lewis Hamilton and Valtteri Bottas spinning out of contention, Vettel had his sights very clear on the podium now. As he then passed Carlos Sainz, Lance Stroll and Daniel Kvyat for second at his home Grand Prix. And he would go on to finish in that position as well. And even though his mid-stint to the Grand Prix was not that great, still coming from the back of the grid to second is a great drive. And this is definitely one of the highlights of the Germans 2019. But because of the reliability issues that happened in qualifying, again, another weekend where Ferrari could have done a lot more. But now we were heading for the final race before the summer break. The final race before the summer break being, of course, the Hungarian Grand Prix. A track where Ferrari could finally test their latest upgrades to see if their car aerodynamically was actually improving. But simply Ferrari was still not improving in this area as they qualified P4 and P5 half a second off pole position. All of that despite Charles Leclerc going in rear wing first into the final corner in Q1. And Ferrari going into the race were not exactly expecting to be quick but not as bad as they were. As by the end of the Grand Prix in Hungary, they were over a minute away from the race victory and were clearly one second a lap slower than Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen in the Grand Prix. In what has to be their worst race pace performance of 2019. And the reasons these happened were the same as before. Lack of downforce, especially on the front end and severely poor tyre wear in comparison to Mercedes and Red Bull. And even McLaren, who with Carlos Sainz were faster at the end of the first stint of the Grand Prix. But there were still some things of note in this Grand Prix for Ferrari. Charles Leclerc pitted quite early on compared to teammate Sebastian Vettel, as Leclerc went on to the hard compound for the final stint of the Grand Prix. And Sebastian Vettel went on to the soft compound from the medium at his only pit stop. Meaning that Sebastian Vettel was now going to have to race the wheels off of his car to try and get a podium. And eventually, by the end of the Grand Prix, Sebastian Vettel did pass Charles Leclerc in a daring but brilliant move for third place. But I have to just touch on this. The reason I have to touch on this is because of a certain incident that occurs later on at the Brazilian Grand Prix. Now, Ferrari, at this point of the Grand Prix, were running in a clear third and fourth place and were not going to attack anyone ahead and they were not under threat from anyone behind. Why Ferrari decided to take this risk is beyond me. People criticise me for saying it, but I'm going to say it again. Ferrari should not have allowed the two drivers to race at this point of the Grand Prix. And take, again, the risk of both drivers knocking one another out and eliminating any hope of a podium. Ferrari were not going to gain any extra points doing this, and there was no point doing it at all. And this is just another illustration of how horribly managed this team is. That they allow this to happen when again there is no point in allowing this to happen. A great example of how to manage a team properly is what Ross Braun did at the 2013 Malaysian Grand Prix. In a very similar situation where Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg for Mercedes were racing very hard for third and fourth place. But because they were not under threat from anyone behind and they were not attacking anyone ahead, Ross rightfully said Old position, we are not wasting points here. That is a great example of managing your team well. This, even though the two drivers did not collide, is not a good example of managing your team well. And Ferrari are very lucky that in this instance, the two drivers were good enough to not have a collision. But to be honest, they probably deserve these two to have a collision just to show up their own stupidity as a team for allowing this to occur. But still, Sebastian Vettel got third place and Charles Leclerc finished in P4. As Ferrari now headed into the summer break, hoping that somehow in the second half of the season, they could get a race victory. But in the championships, things were not looking good for Ferrari at all, as they were miles off Lewis Hamilton and the drivers with Vettel and Leclerc. 
and in the constructors compared to the silver arrows as well. Not exactly befitting of a team that was half a second clear in testing. But after their first half of the season, who honestly knows what was going to occur in the second half? But in the second half of the season, would Ferrari A, win a Grand Prix? B, bottle three or more races? C, have both drivers collide in a Grand Prix? Or D, all of the above? Join me in part two to find out.